All right, custom trickery. Yes, my favorite. So we're at the front of the bike now. And uh, the most, cons well, <laughs> there's, there's this conspicuous stuff all over this. But uh, the thing that I spent the most time on is towards the end that I have high hopes for is this. It's a custom electrical box, 3D printed. Inside it is a thing called the USB work, USB W-E-R-K. And it's a thingy that goes between Mr. Electrically, between Mr. Generator Hub here and two USB charging circuits. You see that? Two USB chargers right there. And uh, it works pretty nice. There's also a little battery in there, a little buffer battery. Um, the idea is that it goes, that enables me to run Mr. Uh, I, if I put up a, a second USB line, which I can do, I can put that up there. Or I can, uh, but even just with one, see this? Ooh. Ah, okay. Uh, and, uh, and you see, you see where that, that USB line here? That goes do, 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 to this. And this is what drives Mr. Cell Phone with the maps and stuff on it when I'm out riding around. There's a program called Maps.me that uses no data. Not that data is that expensive out here, but when it's not available, it doesn't matter what it costs, if you ain't got none. So it means I can still keep using maps even without any cellular connection at all. It really is worth remarking on, I think, about how uh, international travel is really brought down to the, 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 the for dummies level with the cell phone. It really is true. Uh, let's see here. Also in this is just um, is just some uh, some screw terminals and a bunch of wiring and stuff, so that all of the interconnect between the generator and the light system and the charging stuff is all done here. So that the idea I was going for was that I wanted everything in the bike to be either solid objects, kind of like this or the generator hub down there, or wires that were completely removable so that the, uh, the wires could all be have spares on them. And I wasn't making and breaking connections ugh, between wires on the bike itself. I wanted all of the interconnections between wires to be happening in here and in here only. And I got what I wanted, so that's great. Um, Mr. Lumotech here uh, is that this wire goes to the generator. This wire here, the other one goes to, can you see that? This wire here goes to the back to drive the, it drives the rear lights when the headlight is turned on. Yeah, it's off, flashy, flashy, and always on. Great. All right, swell. And uh, there's some friends at work who helped with all this custom wiring job. Uh, of course, this wiring harness is part of the light and therefore not replaceable. But these other wires here that go places, they, I do have a spare of each one. You can tell that I started off in the aircraft business on electrical issues, can't you? Yes, I think you can. You guys aren't stupid. All right, what else do I have here? Dum, dum, dum. In the back. Oh, yes. Let's stick with the lighting theme, shall we? I'll talk about the socks in a second. That's a Busch & Muller Top Line Plus there. And wired in parallel with it is this light bar thing I made. And they all come on and off at the same time. These are supposed to be on, it's supposed to be a fender mount light, but what the hell, I got these and I did all this 3D printing clampy mount business left and right, and they all come on at the same time. And the whole point is to make the bike wider so that people coming at me see the, uh, the bike. It looks wider and uh, hopefully keeps people from, from striking me. It, it may last the first week and then break. Fine. That's at least one wreck that doesn't need to happen. But uh, the carbon fiber stick here is still uh, stiff enough that if someone hits me, it's just going to break right off. And not like spin the bike or you know whatever. 
Uh, let's see here. The rack inside here in the middle of this big snarl is a, what's it called? A rack time fold it. The rack time fold it. And it breaks apart into a bunch of little pieces, a bunch of flat pieces, just like how, you know, this is a flat piece. And that's an essentially flat piece. This becomes a flat piece when you take apart all the screws and nuts that hold all the pieces together. Yes, yes. Let's see here. Oh, I didn't mention this. Yeah. Speaking of custom foolery, to get all the spacings right and to raise up this, the, these tubus racks. See that? Tubus? Tubus. To raise the tubus duo racks up away from the ground, I, I figured out this all this this wacky custom stainless tomfoolery look at all this look at, look at this stuff so it's all about attaching to the, the fork in the quote normal places but then presenting similar uh, uh, mounty holes if you will higher up off the higher up you know by this much higher uh, up off the ground so that my uh, my two bags do do and do do don't drag on the ground when I turn corners, which is what was happening. Now over here, the rack is not relocated, but there's a whole bunch of stuff on said rack. Let's start low and work our way high, shall we? So down here, uh, you see this piece right here? And this piece right here? These things clamp, clamp to these rods here. It's all in SolidWorks. I figured this stuff out. And uh, the whole point of all this is to present, if you will, uh, these two bottle cages. So I can have left and right supplemental bottles. So I, look, I can have four bottles on this thing all at once. A big one and one, two, three little ones. And then also, this is called the Salsa Anything Cage. It might make more sense if you see it from above. Yeah, there we go. See that? So this thing, left and right, these hold where are they? Yeah, these. These bags here. No, 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 no. See that? And there's this uh, strappy system that reaches around through, through, uh, through there. Anyway, it goes on with straps. And so uh, one of these holds my sleeping pad. And maybe a, little, a couple bits of uh, clean underwear or something. And the other one holds like um, more camping stuff like blankets and folded up pillow and sleeping bag liners and stuff. And then up here, this is another salsa product, different from that. You see how this one has a, it's a little more narrow, it has a bottom to it. This one does not have a bottom to it. It's made to lie like this. And with all, you know, more 3D printed, custom mating, clampery going on. And that is for Mr. Tent. Mr. Tent lives in this. do ba do ba do ba do ba do ba do ba do You see? Like a D's. There you go. There's Mr. Tent like that. And also, I have a couple uh, spare spare rods for the tripod, which we'll get to right about now. All right, so there you go. That's where Mr. Tent goes. Yeah, you know, my little, my mentor slash hero, Mr. Ray, the Australian, he brought all this camping stuff with him on this big trip. He passed right through Phnom Penh on his way. I'm not doing the exact same route, but uh, still, his inspiration is good. He used this tent like about three or four times over the course of the couple years, maybe the year and a half he was out there. But boy, when he used it, he sure did need it. And I'm like, I'm trying to cover all my bases, basically trying to use planning and spending to uh, head off risks of you know, threatening <laughs> inconvenience or danger that may arise. Now, Okay, where, where, where are we at? So we've covered the light rack, the, the light bar. Sorry. There's all this custom clampery going on here. Let's talk about this. The tripod. Yes, with my tripod head up here. There are many uses of having a tripod on the back of the bike. Oh, yes. Now, the headlining use is to hold Mr. Sony. You see, I've only made a couple of videos with Mr. Sony so far, but it'll be up here a lot more. See that? Mr. Sonny goes up here, usually pointing this away or that away. And that's how I get a nice picture of a kind of like a head level.
picture, but still it's it's always it's right down the middle of the center line, if you will. So as long as I can my head doesn't hit something that I'm writing under, that means that Mr. Sony won't hit it. That's the idea. Okay. So it's just a battery powered. There's no cables up here. It's just battery powered. But uh, I can control it from the cell phone, which is very nice. There you go. Also, uh, oh yes, and Mr. Sony goes on with this quarter 20. This is what happens when you have access to McMaster Car Hardware Company. You can get everything that you want. So this do 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 goes up in there. See that? And that's where Mr. Camera goes on. This way I can store the holder and not lose it. Got Mr. Safety Flag here. This is handy. I think this is really <laughs> Who knows how many times this has already saved my life. And then check this out. You see this? You may have noticed, uh, you may remember that in Namibia I made a video of me using this travel clothesline I got. And this was inspired by that. The place called Seattle Fabrics had all this material. I just walked in. And so got these hooky things up here. This is two, two, uh, two springy kind of bungee-like cords. I have a bunch of spares. And I've got these, what do they call them, toggles or I don't know what you call that. But here they are in action. And I actually did a test, test run <laughs> with some uh, underwear and these socks here. So the idea is that it captures Mr. Sock, Mr. Sock, Mr. Underwear, some t-shirts or whatever. So they can flap around in the breeze here as I ride around. Because I'm really uptight about this. Uh, one thing about bike tourists is that they all smell terrible. They smell terrible all the time. And uh, I know how to wash clothes in a sink. I've been doing that so far, and it's not hard. If you've got the, you know, if you've got the, the, the Mr. Pluggy Plug and the, and the laundry soap, and you've got that everywhere. People wash their clothes with buckets out here, and so it's easy to find that stuff. But then what? Because no one wants to take the time to wait a couple days for your stuff to dry. But with this, I really hope I can make this work out because now, every night, I can wash my underwear, squeeze it out, hang it up on the bike, so that when I roll out, it's all ready to dry during the day. And I hope to smell a lot better to people as a result. I'm really uptight about that. I hope it works out. Whew! What have I forgotten? I don't, I don't think anything. This is, of course, the 3D stuff was done in Seattle and uh, SolidWorks helped me figure out all these angles and spacings and everything. Um, hardware is from the hardware store. Something I miss very much. There are hardware stores out here in Phnom Penh, but they're not, <laughs> not the same. There isn't like that DIY kind of culture out here. So in order to get any of this stuff, you really have to know a guy who knows a guy. And I don't know that guy, you know what I mean? So I'm really glad I brought all this stuff with me and I'm glad I stressed about it over there rather than thinking I could pull off some stuff here. Uh, yeah, you know, the, this, this guy, the plastic screw-in hook and all this kind of stuff. That's all. That's all from the States. Oh, God. Thank you. And um, I think that's the story. Oh, yeah. And of course... All Rodriguez and Erickson, that's what I mean when I say R and E, by the way, all of their custom frames come with a bottle opener, so that's handy too, you know, for emergency emergencies. And I think that's the story. Yes, I do. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay, it didn't take too long. So I'm going to post this. I know the time stuff is all out of order, but I'm going to post this, and then I can backfill all my Africa videos. I just needed to do something that I could do start to finish without having to think too much. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Bye for now. Addendum. Addendum. I forgot to mention this contraption. You see this thing? There's two of them. They're identical. Uh, to, to do, to do. These two things. The whole point of it, you see how there's a, they each have a, a groove in it. You see, ah, oh God, how do I show this? Um, the, you see this rod here? This rod? 
and, and this rod here. Do, 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 do. This is part of the rack. These are the rods that also receive do, 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 the, the, the four long mounting screws that also pull in the clamp side over here <sighs> uh, for the, the bottle and the, and the cage mounts. Uh, I was, since we have all this, this big weight up here going wobble, 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 I was worried about the rack doing the, doing the, uh, 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 uh. and so I came, I, I just made this up, but uh, this piece, these two pieces here, and the whole point of them, uh, these have uh, plywood on the inside, actually. Each of these two elements here is actually a sandwich of uh, this plastic side, the other plastic side, and then there's a piece of plywood embedded and captured within. Pretty, pretty rad, actually. So they're super duper 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 strong, and they both clamp. Clamp onto that rod and that rod. And the whole point is to, uh, is to basically uh, stiffen this whole contraption so that it won't want to sway as much because there's a whole lot more uh, stiffness and strength in this in these two pieces here than in the meeny meeny screw and nut here which is where these uh, these rods attach to the, the deck piece of the rear rack <sighs> so there's that and also the uh the tripod legs you see this this is more 3D printed wizardry of a, uh, see there's a top piece and a bottom piece. They're actually the same piece. This one is woo -doo 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 -doo, flipped around. And they, that's how this is attached to this rail here. Oh God. Yeah, that's how it attaches to the, the, these rails that are part of the, the deck, the top deck of the rack. Oh, there we go. So that's how this, <clears throat> grabs onto that. So there's a, you see there's the, there's the screw head there. Mr. Screw goes through all this stuff and threads up into this aluminum piece right there, which is glued onto the end of the carbon fiber piece. Ugh. And I've got spares of all of this. How did you guess? So it's just like here, just like how these 1020, these 1032s do, 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 grab onto this aluminum piece here that has a little insert and it yeah. pulls that together yeah uh while the the mounty clamps here for these rear two legs of the tripod are uh mirror images of each other it's a little different up here there isn't all the same angle games going on i'm telling you man thank goodness for for solidworks to make all this stuff line up right gee whiz and then this right here you, you notice how back up you see how this leg needs to be longer than these two legs are in order for the the triangle to not go straight up and down but instead uh, 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 uh. well the, the tripod is made of one two three four five six of these carbon pieces but they're all the same but right here is the aluminum piece that has the thread insert in it and this here do, 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 do. This bit of length here, this is actually a piece of a plastic standoff piece from McMaster car. It costs like ten dang dollars. Uh, and I just, it's, it's white nylon, but uh, I wrapped it up in electrical tape to make it black to make it match everything else. So anyway, this screw here, see that? It goes up. It's actually really long. It's long enough to mm, grab onto the thread insert that's right in there. Anyway. Geometry games, man. Thank goodness for SolidWorks. I would, it'd be impossible. I would never figure this stuff out. The kinds of problems you can get yourself into. Oh, yeah. And over here, I just want to elaborate a little bit <clears throat> about the electrical box. The electrical box, as you can guess, as you can see, is also a mount for the front light. Well, what's up with that? Well, uh, you know, you got all this bang. Normally, the front lights are mounted onto a somewhere on the, the the fork blade that's all covered with crap or they're mounted like right about uh, they're, they're mounted they're, yeah my other bike it's captured right there 
but nope, because I've got uh, this rack here now and this big, this gigantic bag full of clothes that's sitting on top of this surface here. So I realized, oh man, where the heck am I going to put this? You can, you know, one can, you can attach it up here, but then it would be hanging out forwards on top of the volume that can sometimes be taken up by the, uh, the bag that goes here. And also, they actually want to be low so that they cast a, they're not just casting a little spotlight down onto the ground, but a long oval onto the ground. So these want to be physically low, actually. And it's really nice if they're centered on the center line of the bike and not off to the side someplace. And so that, that's the chain of logic that made this light want to be on this box. And once you know it, this box started off not as an electrical box at all, but just as a piece of plastic that was going to attach on these two threaded holes here that are part of the rack and just hold that. But then I realized, wait a minute, where's all this electrical crap going to go? Oh, let's make that plastic piece actually a, a whole box that has a bunch of wires and crap in it. And there's, there's a bunch of wires and crap in there, believe me. Yeah, and also part of the 3D wizardry was me figuring out how to get this to go on to this. It couldn't just go on here and there in these two, got Craig. Uh, it couldn't just go on to these two threaded bosses here. It would just, because it would definitely wobble, 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 and surely break off eventually. And so you'll see it has these these two arm, angle the arm things going up, da 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 into that. I mean, it's crazy, right? I know. So actually, this is a piece, this piece here, this is, uh, this is one piece of plastic, and this is another piece of plastic where where this happens. And it, by the way, the, all this plastic here is actually held, it's all in compression. This is a super long screw here. It goes do, 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 to about there. And there's another one. Um, can you see it? Yeah, there it is. The screw head. Da, 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 da. And there's actually a, a threaded on both ends. The winky dink. <laughs> it looks like a nut, but it's super tall. And it's captured in there. And so pulling, pulling. And so this whole thing is being compressed. All of this black plastic is being compressed. Which means they'll hopefully not break. And so it's strong as hell. So you can like pick up the whole bike just by picking up this piece of plastic. I'm not going to risk it, but... If I was going to hit something, this would be the first thing to hit, and so I wanted it to be super strong, and let's oh, please work, please work. Uh, I made, see this? I added this for, I don't know, just for kicks. Maybe I can hang something off it or whatever. I, I, I wanted to do that. <sighs> yeah, boy, oh boy. So, these connectors here, like these, these circular connectors, this is all my doing. This, was, this did not come with the the electrical gear, I, I worked that out myself. And also I worked out the, I found this online, these waterproof-ish screw-on panel mount USB receiver things. So there's actually, there's a ton of wires going every which way inside here to make all this stuff hook up right. Uh, yeah, boy. Okay, so this cable here on the right, you see how there's one, two, do, do, do. So this one goes to the generator hub, and that's a low voltage AC signal. So there's, can we see it? Yeah, it's oh, there, back there. Ah, see that there? This, that's how it goes in. And then these two here, that and that, those two connectors are both this. That is to say, the uh, the drivers for the rear lights or anything that you want to come on with that. Yeah, I'm just I have two of them right now. I'm just using one, and then all that light stuff in the back all hooks together back there. <sighs> Ten minutes, crazy. Okay, yeah. So anyway, that's uh, that's the whole story with that too.